This is James Lane with Bold Capital. And today in the August multifamily update, we're going to be going through what we're seeing in the market today. And I um, wanted to start with this quote from a multifamily broker. He said, uh, to compare the market to Olympic diving, the degree of difficulty has gone up. Uh, last year, you just needed to do a half pike. Uh, this past quarter, which was second quarter, you needed to do a triple somersault and two twists to get a deal done. Um, and I completely agree. I mean, it's been definitely not an easy road for buyers um, in the last two to three months, just with changes in the lending environment, changes in interest rates, and changing in equity requirements. So um, I want to start with that because, um, you know, one of the things that I typically look at is Howard Marks and his thoughts on not forecasting where uh, you're going, but sort of figuring out where you are today. And so on the left-hand side, these are some of the questions that he asked himself um, about the economy, the outlook, lenders, capital markets. And pretty much when you go down the list, um, everything is pretty red, right? So the economy is a little bit sluggish. Outlook is a little bit more negative. Capital markets are tight. Um, you know, a few of these on here um, in terms of asset owners is a little bit neutral um, as people are sit sort of sitting um, happy to hold as rent growth continues. And there's not a ton rushing for the exits yet. Um, but pretty much everything else in terms of raising money, in terms of asset prices, those all things that are sort of in the red right now. So if you look at sort of this pendulum swinging, um, it swings very quickly. And so, I mean, if you're sitting sort of in between sort of probably fear a couple months ago, and now um, people are probably here um, swinging back down on the pendulum um, in terms of um, more, just a little bit more anxious. Um, and then at some point, it will, we will all return uh, back to just sort of complacency and greed on the bubble side of the market. But I would say we're sort of swinging back downward here as the tenure has been a little bit more stable. Um, here was a little quote. Um, a lot of the Q2 earnings just came out in the last week or so. And, um, you know, CBRE on their earnings call pretty much on the, their baseline has a slowdown for the rest of the year and potentially a light recession in Q4, and then um, inflation moderating towards the second half of the year. So that's sort of their baseline. Obviously, it's anybody's guess. But if you were to take a forecast or a poll today on where you are, um, you know, this is sort of where we're sitting uh, with the economy. So, um, you know, what's driving this? I mean, inflation's up. Um, it might be peaking. The This last reading came down from sort of the peak in June. So this reading was good um, on the CPI. The Fed continues to just crank the federal funds rate up. I mean, you can see this March, uh, since March, uh, the 75 basis point increases are very heavy compared to previous increases. Um, and that's really bringing the GDP growth numbers down. Right. So that's that's sort of the path. Um, the Fed has focused in on this inflation number. And until this comes down, they will probably overcorrect. So we'll look at the SOFR curve um, in the next couple of slides or SOFR four curve. Um, but um, they're going to keep cranking on this inflation until they see it come down. Um, so here's the curve. Right. So we're probably sitting at about 225 right now. And they probably have a couple more hikes in them. Um, the, the market sort of forecasting sort of early 2023 that they will start, um, cutting the rate here on the federal funds and, um, thus the SOFR curve. And, um, you know, in terms of the treasury curve, this is probably one of the steepest, um, inversions of the yield curve. If you look back to sort of 2006, 2007, it was maybe 20 basis points difference between the two year um, two year here and the 10 year. Um, so it's more of a flat yield curve. You would normally expect, you know, a up into the right yield curve. Um, but right now, um, it is inverted by about 30 to 40 basis points. 
um, with the 10 year being low. So we'll, we'll talk about a little bit on strategy um, for that, because obviously the front end of the curve is very high um, due to the federal federal funds being pushed up right there. And so a couple of market updates um, on the multifamily side, I would say the first thing is tough to get deals done, right? So we talked about the Olympic diving quote, um, but you know what's making it difficult to get done right now is equity and debt, right? So um, you know one of these apartment buyers was quoted in one article saying it's a bloodbath right now, um, just with when your debt when your debt moves let's say your leverage gets lowered or your spread goes up, if your debt moves and then that changes your re requirements on the equity side, um, you know, you might have the equity walk away from the deal and you're sitting there um, sort of stuck um, holding the bag on your earnest money. And so it, it has been difficult. And for people who did get under contract sort of Q1, early Q2, um, it has been tough the past couple of months to get deals done. Um, but what we're seeing is um, risk is definitely getting repriced. I, I would say this is the second quote um, for August is risk is getting repriced. And so, you know, I think let's take, for example, an, an A deal, um, you know, this is just a nice property, class A property. Um, let's say the cap rate last year was 375. Um, today, it might have moved up 50 basis points, so maybe 425. Um, but then compare that to, let's say, an older asset. I mean, this is sort of a flat roof. Um, I don't know. It didn't. I guess it doesn't have individual HVAC, but just window units here. Uh, you know, the cap rate might have been 425 to 450, which is you know just 50 basis points more last year. Uh, right now, it's probably going to be you know five and a half to six percent. Right. So that delta between A and C, which historically has been there, um, just with the risk um, of older assets and a different tenant base or more challenging tenant base, um, you know, that risk premium was not there uh, because debt was cheap and there was a lot of capital in the market. But I think this this is getting repriced right now. Um, so I would say those are the two two takeaways. I mean, this is more. Um, historical, tough to get deals done. Obviously, it'd still be tough to get deals done um, going forward. But I think um, with this risk getting repriced, it's going to um, allow people to come in and start buying deals um, at sort of an updated price. So um, I was listening to Neil Bawa and, um, you know, I, I liked his description of the economy right now, um, suffering from bipolar disorder or disease. And pretty much all these things that we talked about, right? Inflation's high, interest rates are high, GDP is negative, stock market down, there's an inverted yield curve, all that is negative. The one thing that is sort of holding this together um, and not calling this quote unquote a recession quite yet is unemployment is still stubbornly low. Um, so we're seeing um, the last reading beat expectations. Um, unemployment is um, still, I think, pretty much all the jobs are back from COVID and then wages are increasing as well. So this is still the positive. Um, you know, when you look at unemployment historically in recessions, so this is in the gray bars here, unemployment, you see a increase to like, this is going from five to seven and a half. This is going from four to six and then great financial crisis. It went from 5% unemployment, almost to 10% unemployment during the recession. And so um, pretty much all the recessions, but, you know, not counting COVID, but all the previous recessions, I mean, you're seeing an expansion of the um, unemployment rate significantly um, by, you know, probably two to 3%. And so they, we, we just have not seen that. Um, you know, one of the things that you look for is the, the jobless claims. And that is still hovering around 200, 250,000. And so we have not seen a huge spike in that number. But when you do, that's sort of a leading indicator that um, the unemployment rate will start being impacted. So we're seeing we're seeing some uh, companies talk about layoffs. We have some companies talking about a slowdown in hiring, but we have not seen a big um, reduction 
or big increase in unemployment. And so that is what is going to drive really your rent growth and really your occupancy in a lot of these properties. And so um, when this bipolar disorder, uh, the Fed is going to keep pounding on that economy as much as possible with the higher rates. Um, and I, until inflation is tamed and hopefully they can achieve a soft landing where um, inflation is down and unemployment stays in sort of the range that it is right now, which is, you know, three and a half to 4%. Um, so we've gone through sort of an economic update. We're going to, um, second half of the presentation, we're really going to be talking about the financing market and what has changed. Uh, my background, born and raised in Houston, uh, been up here in Dallas uh, since 2006, after going to UT, and then um, started as an underwriter on the loan side, and now focused more on the origination side of multifamily loans, and then also invested in, um, you know, close to probably uh, 35, 40 properties now across um, all the major metros in uh, Texas. So, um, so a lot of people are asking, you know, why multifamily still, um, you know, in terms of placing capital, I think a couple of the things, and I keep adding to this list every month, it seems like, but um, you know, there's still low vacancy, right? So you're still probably 95% occupied across the board. Um, your leases are resetting annually. Um, the higher interest rates are driving single family affordability down. Um, prices are still relatively high and the down payments are high for people. Um, you're, you're able to buy at reset pricing. Um, you're getting higher cap rates now, and then new construction is slowing. Um, it's just, we had a lot of developers um, that I've heard from, they pretty much have slowed due to rising costs. And then we're gonna talk more about this, but lending is still available from Fannie and Freddie at still relatively low rates. And then you're still getting bonus depreciation this year. Um, this was a study that was done by uh, NMHC, and pretty much it shows that you need about 4.3 million more units um, in the next 10 years or so. And there's this is, um, you're short about 600,000 units right now, and it's still gonna take time to get those units because um, not only are you lo losing older stock, um, but the construction of single family and multifamily is down just with COVID and since the great financial crisis. So the demand supply imbalance is still gonna be there for a while. All right, let's talk about the capital stack. And, you know, I think it's it's a little bit flipped right now. Um, the floating rate bridge, you know, you're all in at six to 8%. Even your fixed rate bridge is probably closer to 6% now. And Fannie and Freddie are looking like uh, the bell of the ball right now. They're at 475 to five. Um, the main thing is leverage. How much leverage can you get on Fannie and Freddie? So when you look at this chart, this compares sort of all your loan options out there. Um, bank loans, they had a, a small window when, uh, you know, their rates were inside of Fannie Freddie, their rates were inside of bridge loans. Um, but now they have started expanding, um, because the federal funds, they really move, uh, with the federal funds. So they're, they've had to increase, they're probably closer to five and a half to 6% on your bank loans. Uh, the agencies have still sort of stayed in that 475 to 525 range, just depending on what type of prepayment you do. And then your non-recourse bridge, your starting rate is probably closer to 6% now um, based on where SOFR is. So, um, so uh, we'll touch on these. And I highlighted, I got my highlighter out on this webinar um, to talk about different, uh, you know, where different loan products are. I would say on your recourse bank side, the main thing is rates have moved um, five and a half to six. You're still able to get higher um, leverage than Fannie and Freddie, but you are signing personally. And, um, you know, banks, they not only have to deal with multifamily, but they have other loans on their books. And so we're seeing banks get a little bit tighter um, just with they know that um, there might be an impending recession. And so they're they're tightening up their loan books right now. Um, so you're going to want to have to um, have an experience, be a loan broker or have someone be able to shop your loan pretty well um, to get um, a recourse bank loan right now closed on time. Um, so this was one we did out in Tyler. Um, this one was done a couple months ago. So it was a little bit higher leverage, um, five-year term, 18 months IO. And this this one was still sort of um, mid to high fours on rate. Um, 
and no prepay, which was nice on sort of the recourse bank side. Uh, all right, let's, so let's go to Fannie and Freddie. So Fannie and Freddie are definitely, um, you know, they have about 78 billion each to put to work and they are really starting to um, pick up business right now um, because the bridge lenders are expensive, recourse banks are expensive. And so really to make sure that you're able to get a deal done, a lot of people are going to Fannie and Freddie. Um, so we're, we've got, you know, probably two to three deals that we rate locked in the last couple of weeks and, you know, they're in the mid fours and that's fixed for 10 years. Some of them are getting, you know, three, five, 10 years IO on these deals. And they're really focused on affordability, focused on experienced borrowers. Um, and this is really a backstop for multifamily lending. Um, so in my previous days at GE, you know, we had, we did office, industrial, retail, those guys really don't have a backstop, right? So they have the banks, they have life insurance companies, they have CMBS, but they do not have Fannie and Freddie. So Fannie and Freddie are providing the backstop right now, um, definitely in 2020 during COVID. But even right now, when the bridge lenders have sort of stepped back, the banks have stepped back a little bit, um, Fannie and Freddie is what people are sizing to. And you're able to get, you know, maybe four and a half, um, percent on a fixed rate, whether it's seven or 10 year, and then floating rate is still relatively low. Um, your spreads are probably 225 uh, to two and a half on the floating rate spread. And so that is providing um, liquidity on the uh, financing side, on the Fannie Freddie side. So we're seeing a lot more borrowers size to this and sellers having to price to this um, versus um, bridge debt before. Uh, this was a deal that we closed in Temple, uh, fixed rate, Fannie. Um, this one was probably closer to 60% leverage. And then, um, you know, 10 years, three years IO. Um, those those transactions are becoming more and more common. So I think what you'll see is um, sort of our Q3, Q4 volume will be more agency um, financing going forward. All right. So um, Bridge Lenders, you know, this used to be, you know, if you go back to 2021, 2021, look at the number of lenders that would be bidding on deals. You know, there'd be 10, 15 lenders. The spreads on those deals were, you know, three, uh, three and a half percent. SOFR was zero. Um, and so your all in rate was starting at about three and a half. And this market has moved significantly. And um, this was a bridge lender on their earnings call. Pretty much, you know, <laughs> they're talking about pricing. Pricing was 300 to 350. Now it's almost 450, right? So it's almost up a, a percentage point. LTV uh, nine months ago um, to now is probably 7% less. So it's probably was 75, now it's 65. And then this is the this is the challenge right now is the bridge lender um, puts together all these loans and then they've got to take it out to the market and securitize it. And um, this CLO market, uh, has pretty much dried up and the cost to do a CLO um, in terms of what investors want to um, expect, um, it just wouldn't be profitable for these guys to do these CLOs. So they're having to hold these deals on their balance sheet and not many bridge lenders can do that. Or if they, if they do that, they can only do a certain amount. And so um, the number of bridge lenders has gone down. And so it's made it very challenging in the bridge space uh, right now because your leverage is lower, uh, your spreads are higher and your, your rate is starting at like six, six and a half percent. And your leverage is not that much different than Fannie and Freddie, right? So if I have a choice between a Fannie loan or a bridge loan, um, you might get five to 10% more leverage, but then, um, your rate might have, you know, 150 basis points more in cost. And so, uh, bridge lenders are, um, you know, I would say, most of them, um, they are down in volume this quarter for sure compared to Q1 of this year. Um, so what people are talking to us about right now is, all right, I got a bridge loan in 2021 or 2022. Um, you know, it's SOFR plus 325, 450. Now SOFR has gone up. I have a cap, which is great. Um, but, you know, that cap expires in 12, 18 months. And now I've got to figure out a way to either sell the asset or I've got to extend this maturity. 
Um, so you usually have built-in extensions on the bridge loan, but um, you know, for um, guys who need a little bit more time, we're looking at um, potentially going to agency with a floating at SOFR plus 225, 250, or even going to um, an agency fixed with maybe a lighter prepay, like a seven year yield maintenance or step down prepay. And it is um, relatively, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's uh, relatively easier if um, you are sitting at a 278 10 year treasury or 28 10 year treasury to refinance out of your bridge loan. And so this, this mark, um, you know, has, it's, it's hovering around that 275, 3% range for the last three or four months on the 10 year treasury. And so if you are at a point where you can hit a 125 on a 30 year AM, um, with a focus really done on net rental and T3 net rental, um, a lot of bridge loans in 2021 are looking at refinancing into agency right now. Um, to give yourself a little bit more time. Um, your collections are doing well right now. If we hit any sort of recession and your economic vacancy or your rent growth is um, impacted, you would want um, to take the higher collections right now, refinance into something um, that's going to give you a little bit more time on your loan. Uh, here's a loan that we did on the bridge side, uh, full-term IO. It was about 65, 70% levered and... Um, about SOFR, uh, SOFR plus four, I think it was the spread. And so, you know, this this is the deal where it's 100% classic coming in, doing a lot of rehab. And so, um, you know, the rents are probably gonna go up three, $400 from where it was. Um, but if you look at Q2 closings, I mean, a lot of it was non-recourse bridge, um, some recourse bank, but I think in Q3, you're gonna start seeing a lot more agency business being closed. Uh, in the third quarter. All right, we're about a month away uh, from our conference in September. So if you have not been to Dallas or if you want to come to Dallas and see us live in person, uh, we are having our annual conference September 14th and 15th. You can go to oldcapitalconference.com and learn more about it. But pretty much it's a two-day event um, with pretty uh, probably about 500 of our closest friends uh, with people from all over the industry, listing brokers, property managers, uh, lenders, general partners, limited partners. Um, so if you haven't come out and seen us, uh, I would definitely recommend that event. Um, and then in terms of, you know, I think the volatility in the market has proven why um, having a mortgage broker on your team um, is important because, um, you know, at the beginning of the year, you might've been looking for a bridge loan. Um, and now you're transitioning to Fannie and Freddie, or you might be going to recourse uh, bridge loan, I don't know, in six months or nine months. You just never know. And having all those options available so that you can pivot and understand that is key. Um, you know, we represent you throughout the entire transaction um, and we charge the same as everybody else. So um, if you have any questions about Old Capital, definitely let me know. Um, in terms of uh, if you like this video, definitely like the video, subscribe to this channel. Um, if you need help on a term sheet, send me T12 rent roll OM whisper price and I can get you a loan term sheet. And then if you want me to help you review a deal um, that you're looking at investing, happy to do that as well. Just send me the investment package. And then really the first step is um, completing personal financial statement and setting up time to talk with me um, as you get started in this business. And then if you're interested in joining Old Capital, definitely send me an email with your resume and we can um, set up next steps from there. But appreciate everyone joining uh, this month.